It's okay, the, the table in the championship's ridiculous, isn't it? I think if you win, you could go up to third, and if you lose, you could be down in 11. Mm -hmm. so, it's no wonder um, fans are always delighted or angry. Or <laughs> right, so, was that a question? Yeah, I think there's a question there somewhere. I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous league, isn't it? I mean, um, trying to stay up the top of it. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a tight league. I think you know, obviously the top two have had an unbelievable starts, both of them, and um, but the rest seem all very very close and tight. I think um, as I obviously always say, there's lots of different ways of playing in this league. Some teams are pretty direct, and some teams are very well defensively organised. Some teams are really really expansive. Um, and it's difficult to prepare for them every two and three days if you going to do it to play the next game sometimes you have to just work on yourselves and um, and trust what you do and see whether you can get the results so um, that's generally what we've been trying to do of course if you get a week preparation it's much better and you can study them for three or four days and, and give the game plan to the team and have the little tweaks that you need to do but that's not always the case in this division um, yeah, and and the teams are all pretty tight t to each other. The results are showing that you you can't really, apart from the top two, sh see any consistency in any of the teams. So some teams, and we're part of that. You know, lose three on the bounce, win four on the bounce, lose two, win three, win one, lose one. It's um. But yeah, we we we're doing okay. You know, I, I'd always said at the start of the season, don't worry about the, the, the league table until it gets into. I don't know, a dozen games or so. Well, we're in a dozen games, and the, as you said, from almost from not from right at the top, but from top to well below halfway, it's all pretty tight. Win a couple of games, and you can jump lots of places or drop lots of places. And what's the challenge you get from Swansea? I suppose, to my mind, they've always been a sort of expansive, good passing side. Um, I think they still play like that. What, what are the challenges you face with them? Um. Yeah, I think you have to be organised and ready for Swansea. I think they they uh, they are expansive and they do. Um, I think I think like a club philosophy because they've been doing that for lots of managers, not not just the last manager or this manager, but managers for many years before. Really, you know, Brendan Rodgers and all that going back, you know, ten years or whatever it is. It's um, I think the club philosophy is that they they want to play with the ball. So. Um, the challenges, yeah, be organised, um, have a game plan as, as as best you can, and yet, as I mourned a little bit last week, you know, the, the weather is building into after the national break was horrific, really, and it was really difficult to do the preparation for the game. Today, you couldn't do the preparation for the game. The pitches are underwater, really, and the little bit that we did find. Was only enough to basically play some more sided games. Just um, so we did a lot of video work and we'd go to Swansea and see how we get on and um, but go and bring our own version of what we do really and um, see if it's enough on the day. Yeah, it's a, it's a long way to go as well, isn't it? One of your further trips and I don't know in my head I just think well that that makes it harder because it's further, but travels a bit easier than it used to be. Is it still is it still a factor when you have to go that kind of distance to play someone? Um, not really. As long as, again, it, it, everything's down to finance, I suppose. Really, we, we are we are going to um, we are going to fly to to um, to this game. I think it's the right thing to do because it is a. Otherwise, it's a six and a half hour. You know, it's, uh, last year six and a half hours back. It's you get back at ridiculous hours in the morning and stuff like that, and then each into the next day and the preparation for the game after. You know, especially when you're doing three game weeks. This thankfully this week isn't a three game week, so. Um, yeah, we see it as like a one-off opportunity for us to be prepared and be ready. And on the back of a win against Norwich, we um, we hope to go there, be aggressive, and and um, impose ourselves on them. As, but we have to be very mindful that they're a good team with good players. And finally, how's, how's your injury list? If you've got anyone who's not been available, who might be making an appearance this weekend? Um, I don't think so. I think the injury list for the last however many months now has been pretty solid on my board. You know, I think there's six first team players unavailable with long term injuries. Um, I think.
think we've added um, Eliza Mayanda to the to the group, um, but he still hasn't played. He's played one 90 minutes game against Hibs in a bounce match on the training ground. Um, yeah, there's a few lads going to have, have travelled actually to Southampton today, and they're on the course to Southampton. But um, we'd left Meander because because of the hamstring situation, really sitting on the coach wasn't going to be much good for five, six, seven hours, whatever it is, for him to then go and try and play a match. So he's going to come with us and try and get him more integrated in the group. But, but the squad's pretty much the same as it's been. All right, thank you. Cheers. Hi, Sonny. Um, just picking up on the, the point about the, the league, um, you made the point in recent weeks about how the performances have been there, the players have been kind of doing everything right, you just not have necessarily had the rewards. That that also feeds into why it's, a, it's an interesting league, isn't it? In that you can put in the same performance twice against two teams that are at a similar footing and the outcome can be completely different. Yeah, them, 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 as I said, them teams that you play, you know, we, it, it might be a, you know, Millwall who you know that's it, they are more direct than than Swansea, you know, and yet they might be very similar league points, league positions. They, they you you find a way to win football matches or you find a way to lose a football match. But um, I think that's why you have to work with your own identity and try and play the way you want to play, and. Um, and sometimes your vulnerabilities. If if a major strength of some team is set play goals, you know you lose goals from set players. You you you're going to end up losing a football match if you're consistently doing that. It's um, because I think every coach in this team can this league, sorry, can um, organise their team defensively. Every team is really hard to break down. Every team is solid. Whether they sit in deep blocks or that whether they press the ball really high up the pitch they, they, every team seems organised and disciplined and um, it's not easy to, to score goals so unless you know you get your nose in front early teams have to change their plans you can then um, find the spaces in them but we've done that once or twice this year but um, but I'm expecting a tight game as, as I'm sure they're expecting a tight game um, I, I genuinely believe in this league the individuals with the X factor can make the difference to win, win and lose football matches because as I said every team is very organised and um, not much between them the individuals who can eliminate players skip past players um, finish put in great crosses or great assists they make the difference and you win football matches because we like lots of other teams in this league can be organised against the ball and, and stop the teams um, getting through the goal. That 3-1 win against Norwich came off the back of a kind of tricky spell of results. Um, how much of a boost is it not just having the win, but the kind of win you had where you came from came from behind and dominated the game the way you did? Um, how much of a boost uh, to, to win football matches is a boost, you know. Is, and I, I fully understand you have to put you have to string results together if you can in this division, you know. If we lose this one on Saturday, everybody will be telling me we've won one out of four, you know. It's, it's um, I, as I've tried to say, I'm more interested in the performance level of the team, win, lose, or draw, because uh, I genuinely believe over 46 games, if you are the best team most weeks, you're going to win more games and. Um, so we work on all aspects of it. We try to we try to build up. We try and be competitive. We try and make sure we're athletically we run and compete with every team. We um, try to find ways of breaking down blocks of, of defensive units and um, trying to integrate young players into the group. It's um, it, it's a challenge, but um, one that we try and enjoy and do it with a smile on our face and get on with it and try and be. Um, Try and deal with any criticism that comes along, as as in football in this industry. Of course, it does. You don't win a game. Everybody knows the answers. Everybody would have picked a different team. Everybody would have made different substitutes. That's that's all right. You have to stay single-minded and keep going on what you're doing and what you believe in. And um, and as I've always said in football for the last 20 years, you know, you don't win enough games, you won't stay in a job. If you win football matches, generally everyone's happy. Just a word on Chris Rigg as well. He's had his call up to the under 17s. He must be absolutely delighted um, with with that with him representing his country at the World Cup. I'm delighted, did you say, or him? I said, you, are you delighted for All him? All right, I'm, I'm delighted for him, yeah. I'm disappointed that he's going to miss four games or something for the team, of course, but um, delighted for 
for Chris, it's an it's a fantastic um, achievement for him to, you know, potentially captain that team as well. And um, nice to go to um, where's he gone to Thailand, I think, hasn't he, for four weeks? Um, sounds nice. Um, but yeah, listen, I, he, he it's a fine balance. We had a long chat with him, to be honest, and telling him, like you said, delighted for him. It's a fantastic experience. It's you know, this club would never deny. A young guy playing for his country in a World Cup, it's its amazing. But, um, you know, he has to understand when he comes back. Let's hope the results have all been really positive and he finds it difficult to get back in the group. But, um, but we're delighted for him that he's, he's, he's um, going to a World Cup and hopefully they can be successful. And then last question for me, obviously, I handed uh, Bruce Sanders first start um, in the game against Norwich. How did you feel he settled in the game? Yeah, he worked hard. He... he, he um, he just brings a different aspect, really. You know, he wants to try and run him behind. He's, he's short and sharp in little bursts that he got. Um, just a little bit different from what Mason had been bringing. Um, different from what Amir brings. Um, and he's different from Mayanda. So, at this moment, he's he's um, he's filling that spot in the team for us. We won the game that he played in. It, um, there's every chance he's going to continue in that vein and let's hope we can win again and he keeps growing and um, I'm very conscious of not trying to put too much pressure on them, it, you know, bottom line all strikers know that their job is to try and score goals and help the team win football matches so um, this, this is not a 19, 20 year old kid, this is a 25 year old man who's who's been around the Ukrainian national team and so he has to um, and he understands he has to uh, do his job and, and hopefully help the team get a win.